All right. Hi. Hello. How are you? Um, well, I know you're not doing uh, very well, but can you in, can you tell us who you are and what's your story? Well, uh, my name is Anvar Nilufari. I'm a recognized refugee and a civil engineer who has been uh, held hostage in Greece against my will for now nearly six years. Now I'm conducting this interview with you on my protest site, hunger strike actually, day uh, 57th of my second hunger strike here at the doorsteps of the Office of the United Nations Refugee Agency, UNHCR. That's briefly. So, okay, so you are right now in the street, you're in front of the United States Refugee Agency in Greece, in, in Athens, right? Um, and you uh, can, yeah. United Nations Refugee Agency, you said you're in the United States. No, sorry, United, sorry, I said, sorry, I misspoke. United Nations Refugee Agency, sorry. That was UN, okay, so why are you there and why are you on a hunger strike? Well, uh, as I said, I'm a recognized refugee, which means a beneficiary of international protection. Uh, I had an illegal deportation from Sweden back to this country in September 2015. And they said my, de my deportation was uh, on the grounds of the Dublin regulations, which was completely false because uh, at the time Greece was not abiding by those, those regulations. And they sent me exactly at the time when all the borders were open and people could freely leave this country and reach other European countries, specifically uh, Germany, to seek asylum there. But I don't know, for some reasons, the Swedish uh, migration agency sent me back exactly at that time, right. which was... And you're, yeah. you're an Iranian refugee, right? Um, and you, you, when did you leave Iran? I left Iran in 2005. I generally don't like to call myself an Iranian because now uh, I, I, I live half of my life in exile and I'm a Kurdish actually. Uh, Iran has never been a country for me and if Iran was a country, I wouldn't ever be in a situation like this. So I generally say I'm a stateless person because I don't really recognize Iran to be my country. Why did you leave? Um, why did you leave Iran? Uh, due to political and uh, religious beliefs that are okay. opposed opposed to the Iranian uh, Islamic Republic. Right. And so you you have been a refugee for most of your life, then, right? Yes, you could say almost half of my life. Yes. Okay. So, and you've been you've been. Uh, in Gr Greece for the past six years, and now you've been on hunger strike for how many days? Uh, this is second time that I'm on hunger strike here. Uh, this is now, uh, I'm now on day 57, actually. Mm. And uh, uh, I've been on protest here since March 21st, 2017. I had a tent here, if you see this okay. tree behind me, there is Wait, another me... one. Okay. Uh, over there, my tent was there since March 21st, 2017. They destroyed my tent five times. Uh, you know, Ooh. they called uh, well, uh, police, I think, because here yeah, they call the police for me, and police takes me to the detention. Uh, they keep me there in detention for several hours. Each time is different, generally three hours, but there are times that it's more than three hours. And when they release me, I come back here and I don't find my shelter. It's completely gone. They have done this so far five times. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, and I was I was also on hunger strike in 2017 for 64 days. Okay. And how is your health right now? Like I I, I don't know if you saw, but I showed uh, one of your pictures. And um, here, let's I'll show you this one. You um, are you like are you okay? Like it seems like. Are you like? Do you need medical attention right now because of your hunger strike? Well, yes, certainly I need medical attention. I need the legal aid. I mean, uh, it's clear that I need all those, but I mean, they are not offering any help. That's the big issue here. I can ask that I need help. I can ask for medical aid, but uh, there are. I can provide it to 
to myself. I mean, there are other people who claim to be providing those services to refugees, and I have reached out to all of them, and yet I don't see any of those people coming here or offering any of those services for me. For, is, for example, um, Medicines Without Borders, Doctors Without Borders, MSF, their office that is 100 meters away from the UNHCR's office. And they are well aware of my hunger strike here, my protest here for over past uh, 40 months. Uh, now my second hunger strike, day 57, and they won't even send a person, one person, one doctor to do a general checkup for me. 100 meter, what is the difficult? What is, why can't, why can't they do it? It's, it's mm -hmm. not, it's, it's very strange. It's not, it's, uh, I mean, uh, I cannot say why, why are they doing this? There is something going on behind the skins behind the scenes uh, okay what why are you so you're on strike because what like what do you what are you strike why are you protesting yeah well uh, as i said i was illegally sent back to this country in 2015 uh, in 2014 they misled me here in this country they told me i uh, because I didn't want to go to the other European countries, uh, say, through illegal uh, means. Uh, so I tried to find a legal way, legal channel, which they said I had to, uh, you know, approach asylum authorities here, introduce myself here, give a case here, and then if admitted, they are going to issue documents for me. And uh, with those documents, I will be able to leave Greece legally and go wherever I wanted to. Uh, settle in Europe and stay there permanently. Uh, but it turned out that uh, I, if it's I did, I mean, I stayed here for about 10 months and then I got papers and then I went to Sweden and Sweden kept me in a refugee camp for three, two months and then sent me to a deportation camp and it kept me there for another month. So overall, they kept me three months in the refugee camps and then they sent me back here, which I explained at what time they sent me back. And uh, clearly, I have no protection, no support, nothing in this country. Now I'm also undocumented for over 30 months. The reason I'm on protest and hunger strike here is a lack of uh, protection, lack of any program in this country for refugees. They are just playing with our lives. So I'm seeking to be resettled in another country outside the European Union, namely Canada, United States, or Australia, which is only possible through the UNHCR's refugee resettlement program, which is why I'm here. And another reason, another reason is that due to the same regulations that the Sweden uh, uh, used to deport me back to this country, I, now I cannot seek asylum in any other European country, same Dublin regulations. So for me, uh, it would only be so my resettlement. You tried to do it through legal means, but they basically closed all the all the avenues that you could have taken to to get asylum through legal means. Is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Like they didn't, they're not providing you with any options for you to be able to um, move forward with your asylum case. Is that what you're saying? I, I, I gave an asylum case in Greece in 2014. That's what they said and that's what I did. And I was admitted, my asylum was accepted. I got papers. Uh, refugee status and travel document and with those documents I was able to leave Greece and reach Sweden. Say, I, the reason I went to UNHCR in 2014, as I said, was because I didn't want to pay people smugglers to reach other European countries. I didn't want to do it through irregular means mm -hmm. because I came to this country in uh, uh, 2014 from uh, Turkey to Greece by paying people smugglers, by getting into a boat. Our journey took uh, 12 hours when the smuggler told us it will maximum take half an hour or one hour. So 12 hours we were on the agency. We, we were all disappointed. We were all uh, lost hope in life and future. We were all convinced that we are not going to make it, that we are going to die. But I don't know, some, somehow we made it to the land. So that experience made me to, you know, was extremely difficult for me. And uh, 
I reached a conclusion that uh, finding a legal way and legal channel will always be much better than dealing with people smugglers and risking my life like that. But now, so right now, but now you have a legal status in Greece, right? Like, can't you just stay in Greece? Currently, no. Currently, my status is not clear because uh, the documents they gave me was only valid for three years. So it was expired on uh, March 19, 2018. So ever since I am undocumented and uh, my protest has begun one year before prior What do to... they want you to do? Like, what do they want you to do? Uh, well, I, nothing. I think they want to push me to stay here. It's not clear, really. They want me to suffer. They want to torture me. They want to torment me because I, this is not a solution for anyone in anywhere. They are even... So you, are, me you're homeless right now? Are you homeless right now? Well, basically, you could say that. Basically... Is that like you're right now in the street? Is that where you're uh, Yes, you? yes. I'm not accom accommodated anywhere. They haven't offered me any support. I, I you, clarified where this. Where do you get... How do you get food? Like, are you okay? Like, where do you get, um, how, how, how are you able to survive right now? Well, it's now been six years that I'm on this um, continent. And if so far I have been able to survive is only because I had some savings from the past because as I said, I'm a civil engineer. So I was working in a construction com company in uh, international construction company in northern Iraq. Right. So I had I had some savings there. And up to this day, if I was able to survive, it was was only because of my own savings, not that. Uh, in northern organic. Iraq? So you're, an in, you're a, so you're an educated person and you were working in northern Iraq as an engineer. Northern Iraq, you said? Yes, true. Kurdistan region. Kurdistan region. OK, OK. Um, and OK, so um, and no, nobody is helping you? There's no institutions, no organizations helping you? Uh, well, there are institutions and organizations. For instance, there are many refugees who have been, or asylum seekers who have been accommodated or given, you know, cash card, monthly allowance. But when it comes to my case, everything uh, goes in a different direction. I have reached out to all of these NGOs, all these organizations in person, in writing, via phone calls. For me, nothing, which is very, very uh, irregular, very, I mean, strange. For mm -hmm. me, they are just calling the police. That's what they are doing. So even here, I, I what, can't inter... Why is, yes. your case so, why is your case diff being treated differently than all these other refugees? Well, that's a question that I, I also look fine looking... Uh, to find an answer for, because I can't answer this question because I don't know really why are they treating me like this. How is it that you've been like, you've been in this limbo for six years and you still don't know what your status is after six years? Yeah, Maybe. true. That's, that's not my fault because it's uh, every time I try to seek information, uh, ask, inquire about my the status of my request because I'm here asking for resettlement. As I said, I have addressed this organization officially uh, via writing. They are not answering and they are not explaining if I have a case with them, if they are trying to resolve this problem or not. If uh, there is somebody who has been assigned to my case, uh, and if there is really, then uh, they should provide me with a contact uh, details, email address, phone number, name, nothing. I, ha I have inquired about this dozens and thousands of times, yet uh, they don't answer me. They don't give me an explanation. They are not replying to my emails. They are, uh, when I call them, they recognize my phone, my voice, and they hang up the phone on me. I mean, what else I can do? Every time I try to reach their office in person, which is right, right now, is there. I mean, if you can see, that's UNHCR. Yeah. Can you show uh, us again? Yes, that's UNHCR order. And as you see, it's the logo, logo, and that's the door. Okay. And that's the stairs. Everyone, that's, every time. That's basically every, United Nations Refugee Center, right? Refugee agency, their agency. main office. Main yes. Office. And every time, 
in Athens, Greece, yes. And every time I try to get, uh, they won't let me inside the building. And if I want to go and reach this office in person, they close the doors and they call the police. And for this, I have been taken to the uh, court 23 times only for trying to say, trying to reach the unit CR office in person and to inquire about my status to find out if I have a case here or not. And the things that I explained earlier, they even took me to prison five times, five times to prison for, and, and what for what, I mean. Uh, for what, I mean, yes, I mean, every time as I say, I try, I tried, I tried, I, I tried, I tried many, many times. And then what were the charges? They, they, yes, they made, they issued an order from a court that I have to keep 10 meter distance from the door the main door and I shouldn't be uh, staying in front of the door. But every time I, so every time I get breach this 10 meter order or get close to the door and it doesn't matter if I stay there or, it, uh, or not, they just use this as an excuse to take me to the court and charge me for, you know, breaching this 10 meter order, uh, 10 meter happened? distance. What happens if you go back to Iran? What happens to you if you go to Iran? Well, as I said, obviously I'm a uh, political and um, religious um, uh, refugee, a beneficiary of international protection in exile for over 15 years now. Uh, what kind of religious and political views? Well, I, I don't, I'm not a religious person, so and many people call it atheism, other people, I don't know, I myself call it a uh, truth seeker. So, okay. um, but... Um, so you had anti-Islamic views that you were open about, and that's why you were, you had to leave. And, yeah, and really, and the political uh, re regarding the Kurdish issues. Oh, yeah, Kurdish, the Kurdish autonomy, uh, autonomy um, you were requiring that, like, that's what you were fighting for as well? Or yes, did... yes, because our, our people, Kurdish people, 40 million in the Middle East, uh, our land is being occupied by other countries, four countries, Turkey, Iran, Syria, and Iraq. We want, we are 40 million. We want to have our land and back uh, to ourselves. We want our freedom and our independence. We want our culture mm. and we want our country in all so this. So you were outspoken about both your atheism and um, your political activism regarding Turkish and uh, Kurdish independence, right? That those are the two things that, yeah, and those are, yeah. So, so that you had a very legitimate case for being a refugee, and um, and how can how can people help? Well, uh, I mean, how okay, it depends really it depends on the people and their abilities their you know social status and their uh, geographical location so i can't really say for sure how they can help for example if if they can be like a political push they could push united nations refugee agency to give an answer to this case why aren't they not answering me if they are for example in the uh, United States or in uh, Canada or in Australia, they can ask their government uh, to be of assistance to me, to grant me asylum uh, or offer me resett resettlement in their country. Uh, alternatively, they, they could, for example, uh, for Canada, they could gather some people to, uh, to volunteer and uh, sponsor me through the a group five sponsorship uh, process to help me, you know, be resettled uh, to Canada, which again, even if um, we find these five persons, five volunteers, we again still need UNHCR to refer my case for resettlement to Canada. And aside all of those, I need publicity because really they are trying to uh, silence my voice and this phone that I am now talking with you and uh, some lady bro you know uh, was uh, kind and from his kind the kindness of her own heart brought it for me 
otherwise, I mean, I wouldn't even use the same photos, one of those photos that you showed, I took uh, with her help. Uh, otherwise, I mean, I'm, I might have died of uh, hunger here and nobody might have known about it. And because the police took all my phones three times and they also broke one of my phones once. They so broke your it, phone? Yes, and took three of them. Uh, actually stole one of the phones, uh, confiscated another one. Like uh, they made it like legal, legal, but because they stole one of my phones and I submitted a complaint to the Greek Ombudsman for stealing my phone. The next time they made it look like it's they are taking it from me like illegally, so confiscated it through the court court procedure. The another one, another time they broke it. Yes. Um, and how did you get internet right now on your phone? Well, the same phone that I I mentioned you uh, this phone that this lady brought. Uh, Terma. Did Terme get internet on your phone? No, 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 not Terme. She's a Greek citizen. I don't know. One night oh. she had seen me here accidental, accidentally. And uh, the day after, obviously, she uh, told some, informed some journalists to come here and have an interview, which they did. And uh, uh, ever since she is coming, visiting me, and I asked, they asked me what I needed. I asked them that I need a phone urgently, immediately. And they helped, they brought me this phone with internet and SIM card, everything. To give you a voice, right? So now you have a voice. Um, yes, I mean, after, after I got this phone, I was able to post this, uh, my first post after, I don't know, 45 days on, uh, you know, being away from social, doing any social activities. And after I posted this, uh, one on my Facebook page, then Arash knew about me, other people knew about me, and after that, I mean, uh, my thing, my story went out. Otherwise, I mean, I would have died here, really. Um, and is there, is, there, is, there, is there something that we could link in the description of this in, uh, interview so that if people want to reach out to you or to share your story, Mm. or contact you in any way? Like, what should I link in the description? Well, uh, if, you, if you do so, I really appreciate it. And you could link my Facebook page. Facebook if you page. want, I, yes, I could send it to you. My Twitter account or uh, Instagram, even YouTube channel. Uh, they could, uh, you know, if they are interested, they could even study, educate themselves, learn about this case, because there are too, too much materials there. Which I cannot explain everything to them uh, right now or to you because I have been also attacked by police, by guards here in front of the UNHCR only because of trying to reach this organization, which is completely illegal what they are doing. They can, for example, find all these videos on my YouTube channel or my Facebook page. Uh, there are instances, for example, I have been visiting the minister's office uh, per inquiring about my status, asking for a response. I went to the prime minister's office, which is video recorded. I've been there to the uh, high uh, European commission's office based in Athens. I mean, I've been to many, many places. I've been to the Canadian embassies many, many times, to the US embassy a few times, to the Australian embassy. I have recorded all of these and I've public video record. I mean, and, and public on YouTube channel and Facebook page. Uh, they could go and uh, see, they could uh, participate in, uh, uh, you know, spreading the word, uh, comment, express themselves. This is not acceptable what they are doing to me, a, a person on the pavement for over 40 months. Why? Uh, give an answer. If they cannot, I'm asking uh, the responsible uh, party. United right. Nations refuse and say it is their job to do this. Refugee resettlement, repatriation, integration. Repatriation in, in my case is not possible. Uh, integration in, in my case is not possible. The only way for me now is a durable solution. Another country which is called resettlement, which is only possible through UNHCR and it is their job and they must do it. If they cannot do it, from this office for any reason, let's say for a political reason, which I really uh, looks like, it really looks like they have made my case a, a political one. 
They could refer my case to another unit, CR office. How, in how is it country. political? How is your case political? They made how it political. Is, how is it not political? A person is here for this long, and nobody talks about it. They are not giving but So you're saying there's some internal politics? There's some internal politics that they have against your case? That's what you're saying? Yes, but the, I mean, behind the scenes, it's not, I can't see it really. I mean, I, I can't show you the proof, but from the sequence of the uh, events that are happening here, it's, it, it is very clear that it has turned it into a political case. They even took me to a deportation camp in 2018, but then they released me without even giving any solution or anything. Uh, just to come back here, why did they release me? Why did they took me to a deportation camp in the first place? Uh, why are they taking me to prison just because I'm inquiring about my uh, status of my case, my request uh, to this organization? Why are they, for instance, taking me to the court so many times? Why aren't they giving me uh, any legal advice or providing me with a lawyer? Why aren't they, send aren't they sending me medical aid? Uh, which this organization itself has to send medical aid, aid to do checkups for me regularly. Why nobody coming is out? 40, uh, 55, uh, 57 days now, second time, hunger strike. Nothing. Uh, what is this? So I, um, I, I have a question. Do you, because the audience that are going to be watching this, we're, we're an atheist organization, so a lot of the people, most of the people who are going to be watching this and listening to what you have to say, they're mostly atheists, right? Um, and I, I know you don't, you say um, other people will describe you as an atheist, you call yourself a truth seeker, but I mean, technically um, you are an atheist based on what you've told me, right? Um, and, but um, do you think that um, if you were like a, a Christian refugee um, or I don't know, a Jewish refugee, do you think that there would be a lot more help out here for you right now compared to, uh, do you think like, because one thing that we tell our audience is that we atheists, they're not there to support each other as much as Muslims or Christians or Jews are there for each other. And part of me talking to you and trying to give you a voice is to fix that, fix the vacuum, the, fa the fact that we are not, This is th th there's this, gap here that is not that needs to be filled there's this uh, demand that we that other atheists are not um you know responding to um do you think that if you were a christian like let's say for example you were a christian refugee you are an ex-muslim christian who had to he had to leave iran because he converted from islam to christianity uh in that case do you think there would be like churches and other christians here for you um instead of just if you if you weren't an atheist I don't think so. Why? But it might have. I mean, um, I can't say for certain, but I, uh, for certain. as I say, yes, but um, uh, clearly, I mean, they turn this into a political issue, so it doesn't matter if they are an atheist or Christian or Muslims. Okay. Uh, yeah. So they, if they wanted to come, they would have come but now nobody comes because i mean okay, really yeah. no i understand I, understand. I just wanted to know if you think that you um if you would belong to other groups you would have been your case would have been gotten more Treated attention. differently yes I, well i cannot say for certain but you can't say for sure uh, well, I, I appreciate I, your honesty um, yes. But either either way, we, um, whether you would have gotten more attention or not, I do think that um, you know we need to be there for each other. So that's why I'm trying to see what what we can do for you, right? Um, uh, before I wanted to actually um, get you to like show us around a little bit, but before I, I ask you for that, do you mind telling me what? You want what questions you wanted me to ask that I haven't asked? Like, is there anything that you were hoping that we get you to talk about, but you didn't get a chance to talk about yet? Uh, well, um, well, I think you covered all the aspects of the issue. I okay. think. Okay. And uh, and we also said people, if they like to know more about it, they can refer to my social media. Yeah. 
It's, yes, please. Uh, people check in the description. I'm going to link to your Facebook. I'm going to link to your Twitter. And I'm also going to link to your YouTube uh, channel. If any, uh, please, guys, go ch link and uh, check in the description. Um, and maybe people could share this video if you want. If they want to bring more attention to it, or anything that you tell them you think is more important, you can let them know on your own account that they could share that. Um, and you basically will keep people updated on your situation. And the call to action is that if if people have any contacts or any resources or anybody that could fix your situation, if they have any contacts, please do that. But if you don't have any resources or if you don't have any contacts, just make sure that you keep the attention on your on on your case. Please share the story and make more you know more people know about the fact that you need help. So at at some point, I'm, ho I'm hoping somebody with the right resources will be able to, especially legal resources, right? Would you say that that would be the most important um, thing that you read right now, like legal help? That's true. And publicity in the international media, English international media, because they haven't spoken about this case in uh, no, none of them, actually. Why? Right. This is Europe. Why are they covering this up? They have to okay. speak. There is an issue here, and they have to talk about it. They have to write about it. They have to make reports. Why aren't they coming? So far, only uh, my case, my situation has been my this hunger strike actually has been uh, gotten some uh, media coverage from uh, Persian media uh, and the one Kurdish media. Other than that, there hasn't been any other media coverage. And now, thanks to you, you are the only. English channel, but uh, you know you are also somehow you know Persian. Well, uh, I'm Persian, but the but our audience are not Persian, right? Our yes. Are speaking. So, yes. Uh, so if they know somebody from the international media, for example, in wherever they are residing, Guardian, Independence, BBC News, uh, CNN, all these media, please tell them, tell them to okay. reach out. If they are but, and if they are, if they themselves are a journalist, a reporters, please reach out to me. They can find all my contact details on my Facebook page, WhatsApp number, email address, everything. Okay. So I need you know, publicity you, as much as possible. Thank you. So if you know a reporter or a journalist or somebody who does know a reporter or a journalist, please send them this video and tell them that this is something that they need to cover. Um, do you mind? Uh, do you mind actually showing us around, like uh, your where you are and what your situation is? I saw you had a sign. Do you mind certainly, showing us that? Certainly. Well, you have been seeing me now. This is one of my signs. So let me turn this camera if I can turn it. Okay. Yes. Now you can see the other side. This is um, this is my board. Uh, here you can see I I have marked the number of the days that I'm on hunger strike here. Uh, this is one of my boards that I have here. There is another sign here. This one that I showed you is addressed to you, and it's CR. And I have another one here, which is addressed to the uh, civilians, uh, regular people who pass by from here. I have listed a list of um, things they could do to help me out here. For exa example, as you can see here, is the first one, tell the press and media. Uh, and uh, other things, I don't know, maybe they can read it later for themselves. And here is the UNHCR's office, as I showed you earlier. Uh, that's the logo of the organization. They are um, residing in the first and the second floor. That's the door. Uh, and this is the one of the trees, which is here. And that's it's basically on the pavement. That's the another tree. My shelter was there. My tent was there for the past uh, 40 months. And uh, yeah, that's that's it. During the, the day, which is uh, there is a shade, some shade here. I I will be sitting here, and when at the midnight, I will be moving over there, uh, over this corner, and I will be sitting there. Now one of the guys is here. He's also a refugee, uh, looking after me. So because they are worried, uh, something might happen to me at any moment. So. Mm. Okay. That's that's around. Was it enough? I can show you more yeah. if you want. No, um, I, I think unless you think there's something important other other than that, you could. That's good then. 
but do you mind if I, uh, you're, are you comfortable with me referring to you as a, like in the title of this video as a Kurdish atheist refugee? Is, are you, is that like, I know, is that, is that accurate? I it's okay, sure. you, could, you could, you could say a Kurdish refugee atheist who call himself a truth seeker. I mean, you could say that. Okay. So, you know. Okay, good. Because, Just because you know, this is a term, this is a term that many people uh, uh, produce a bad meaning in the mind of many people, even though it's not really not bad. The, not with our audience. With our audience, that's not a yes, bad Yes, I meaning. understand, I understand, I understand. Yeah. Okay, so oh, that's why you say you, you don't use that label because you think that other people will see it as a negative thing? Yes, that's, a, that's, that's exactly why. Because I mean, a uh, truth seeker, because at the end, really, we are thinking to be, uh, to find the truth. Right. Okay. As, Bill Maher, as Bill Maher says, oh. maybe you know him. Yes. Uh, if, if God's, um, now we are not denying the God and we are not accepting that there is a God, but if one day, uh, at some point of history, God comes down from the heaven to the earth and visits us, and we can acknowledge him, here you are, where were you? <laughs> nice to meet you. Okay, okay, yes. Oh, okay, you're right, okay, yes, exactly. Um, yeah, but don't worry, with our audience, that's not a negative uh, word, that's a positive term, okay? So we... Yeah, uh, okay. Yeah, okay. Okay, <laughs> but anyways, I'm going to let you go. Again, thank you for your time. I, I really, really hope that uh, you get what you need and you get all the resources and the help that you deserve. So, and again, I'm really sorry for what you're going through, and I hope I, I hope it, ch it changes soon. Again can't believe you're going through this for this long um, and I wish you the best I hope I you know I'll we'll, we'll see what we can do to bring more attention to your case thank you very much for this time and thank you to all your audience and I will look forward to your solidarity and support in whatever ways possible have a good day and I yeah. appreciate it <laughs> thank you all right talk thank you, you.